Well, it was another milestone for Barack Obama today. He held his first press conference since winning the presidential election earlier this week, telling reporters that after taking office, his focus will be firmly on helping America's ailing economy. Obama began the day by holding a meeting with his top economic advisors. The president-elect then said the country's high unemployment rate has to be reduced. We are going to have to focus on jobs because uh, the hemorrhaging of jobs has an impact, uh, obviously, on uh, consumer confidence and the ability of people to, uh, uh, to buy goods and services. Obama says his administration also plans to extend unemployment insurance benefits and offer financial help to small businesses. So just how well did Barack Obama do with his first press conference as president-elect? Here to talk about it is Solon Simmons. He is a professor at George Mason University's Institute for Conflict Analysis and Resolution in Washington, and he specializes in American politics. Uh, Mr. Simmons, good to talk to you again. It's nice to see you again. So you know there's a lot of buzz tonight about what uh, Barack Obama said jokingly, referring to himself as a mutt when he was talking about the family's dog. Are people a little aghast at what he said, and are you surprised? Well, I'm not so sure that surprises me. That's sort of, uh, uh, you know, self, uh, self-mocking. It's uh, playful, I suppose. Sure. I, I, was a little, I was a little more surprised, perhaps, with uh, the, the reference to Nancy Reagan. And, and maybe I'm reading in here, uh, he said that, uh, referring to her seances with for, former presidents and, uh, and so on. But I, I was thinking, uh, the only thing I could imagine is he's trying to, in some ways, undermine what, remember, Ronald Reagan's policies in the economy were known as voodoo economics. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he was uh, associating these things in some ways. Uh, I, I will say this, it did appear to be a bit of a, um, shall we say, a rookie performance in a, in a press conference. It still felt like he was campaigning. It still felt like he was moving forward and trying to, uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, run for office rather than uh, act as the president-elect. So that right. might have been uh, on, on display there. So he's trying to be a little too clever and it just perhaps didn't come off all too well, I guess, in the end. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, uh, w when you go through one of these transitions, sometimes yeah. it's a little bit hard to recognize it's happened. And, and this was such an intense campaign. I think it was, what, 21 months he was, right. on, the, he was on the trail. And, so, and, and it was quite different to watch him in this setting. Uh, but the people, you know, one of the things that was very masterful was the people he had behind him. Mm -hmm. You know, he has, he has Rahm Emanuel, Robert Rubin. Uh, he has all of these old Clinton loyalists and centrists. And that's the first thing we learned about what his administration, the economy, is going to be, is it's going to be, uh, it's going to be competent, it's going to be authoritative, and it's going to be centrist. Because, and that was a big issue because we didn't know if it was, he was, he was called the most liberal uh, senator uh, in, in, in a member of the Senate. And that, uh, it, it seems belied by the kind of uh, strategy he's pursued thus far. So, I mean, he seemed quite assertive, didn't he? Is, was that uh, something that people were waiting to see? Did he know that he had to come off that way and, and have that team, as, as we're seeing here, and as you mentioned, behind him to showcase that assertiveness? I think he does feel he needs to be assertive, and I think that he feels that the economy, people who, they, people need to be uh, assuaged. They need to know that things are going to be okay. That's one of the things that Roosevelt did so well, is he made people feel comfortable. Now, in this setting, uh, he was a little bit tough, and uh, perhaps he could have been a little bit more playful about the economy. Uh, but but uh, I, I think that not only, the interesting, interesting thing to say about it is that the economy is going to be run, uh, it seems, not only on a centrist point of view, but also a, a unified left-center point of view. Uh, under Clinton, it was run more to the right, and mm -hmm. which is interesting now that, that, that he, he won a majority, where Clinton had not won a majority. Remember, there was Ross Perot in that election? Right. And so there's this worried about social populism. They don't have that now, and it's interesting to see how unified the economic center and the economic left are in pursuing a strategy to try to stabilize what it appears to be the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. Although much of the pain has not come through yet, it seems to be on the horizon. Let me ask you, the transition team that, that we saw standing behind him there, the transition team on the economy, the economy that he's assembled includes billionaire Warren Buffett right. and also his chief of staff, as you mentioned, Rahm Emanuel. This is a guy they affectionately call Rambo. What's the buzz right. on why he was chosen? I mean, because he was the top Clinton advisor, right? He was, and the, and the interesting thing about Rahm Emanuel is, is, is how tough he is, and also that he is this centrist. You know, I mentioned this already, but he's this guy, you know, what the chief of staff does is he's the gatekeeper to the president. And so we now know that who's going to get access in the ear of the president is going to be this guy who, 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 who um, cut his teeth under Bill Clinton and is not going to be very open to the extreme left. We're pretty sure about that, and yet, Bob Rubin, Robert Rubin, 
is uh, just co-authored a piece in the New York Times with a, a member of the Economic Policy Institute, which, which is a leftist organization, or let's call it a liberal organization. And so there's a, I think we're going to see what I, you know, uh, Roosevelt talked about what his economic philosophy was, was bold, um, persistent experimentation. Mm -hmm. The boldness is not going to be here. It's going to be mild, persistent experimentation, in my view, an attempt to move things forward, try things, pull some levers, but not to rock the boat and scare business. Because the worst thing you can do, it seems, is scare business in a time when you need investment. And so I think that'll be one of the big changes, and that's what uh, uh, Rahm Emanuel signals to me. We'll continue to watch it all. Solon Simmons with George Mason University in Washington. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jacqueline.